Probably a good thing sometimes. Well, it's just you that's not talking It's 4 p.m. We call this meeting to order. First, a little bit of housekeeping. Members of the public can participate in this meeting by attending in person at room M at the Utility Field Operations Building on 36 Stony Point Road or via Zoom by visiting https colon forward slash forward slash srcity hyphen org dot zoom dot us forward slash j forward slash eight two two one three nine zero zero nine nine six or by phone by dialing six six nine two one nine two five nine nine or eight seven seven eight three five eight five three five two five seven and entering webinar id eight two two one three nine zero zero nine nine six may we have a roll roll call please Yes. Present in the room are Chair Badenford, Vice Chair Ridlington, Board Member Schwartz, Board Member Prindle, Board Member Nareth, and Board Member Kyle. And participating remotely is Board Member McKenzie. Thank you. Um, so as mentioned, the members of the public can join the meeting in person or here yeah, by the Zoom. You'll be participating as attendees on Zoom, so your microphones will remain muted and your camera will remain off. If you're calling in from a telephone and choose to speak during the public comments portion of today's agenda, the pri for privacy concerns, the host will rename your viewable phone number to resident and the last four digits of your number. The city of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption, will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions, and are well staffed to monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessarily, we will also immediately end this meeting. Okay, moving on to item number two, statements of abstention by board members. Do we have any statements of abstention? I'll be abstaining from the uh, minutes approval because I wasn't here last time. Seeing no one else, thank you, Paul. We'll move on to comments on the agenda by board members. Do we have any comments on the agenda? Excellent, seeing none. We'll move on to approval of the minutes. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll move to approve. And a second. Thank you, Tanya, for seconding. Any comments? Uh, on the minutes? No? Excellent, we'll move on to a vote. Please raise your hand if you are in favor of approving the minutes. All in favor except Paul who's abstained, thank you. Okay, moving on to item number five. Uh, public comments on non-agenda matters. Rob, would you explain how this works? Yes, at each agenda item, the item is presented. The chair will ask for board comments and then open it up for a public comment for both in-person and Zoom attendees. The host in Zoom will be lowering all hands until public comment is open for the agenda item. Once the chair has called for the public comment, the chair will announce for the public to raise their hand if they wish to speak on the specific agenda item. 
If you're calling to listen in remotely from a, audibly from a telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call on the public who have their hands raised. Public comment will be limited to three minutes and a timer will appear on the screen for the board and public to see. Thank you, Rob. So now we'll take uh, comments on non-agenda items. And if you're in the room, you can go right over there to the microphone. And if you're on Zoom, you can raise your hand. Or if you're calling in from a phone, dial star nine. Please go ahead. Okay. Hi, Eris Weaver from the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. And I just wanted to announce a few things that we have coming up. A uh, week from Saturday on the 30th. Oh, yeah, I'll just bring the whole thing up. Whoop. Yeah, um, I know I'm pretty loud. I'm not usually the one. Who, I'm usually the one who needs other people to use the mic rather than I needing the mic. Um, on September 30th, we're having our first ever Golden Spoke Awards Gala. Uh, which will both be a fundraiser, but also we're giving away some awards. And actually some of the people who are getting some of the awards are actually in the room. And most of them are actually C Santa Rosa. Uh, so our um, Bike Advocates of the Year are Bikeable Santa Rosa. And both of our, um, we had a tie for Bike Friendly Business of the Year, both of which are in Santa Rosa, Sonoma Queen Power and Shady Oak Barrel House. So you can find out more info about that at bikesonoma.org. Get your tickets uh, soon. And uh, even if you can't go to the event, we have a really cool auction. So we got bikes, vacations, wine, all kind of cool stuff. So you can take a look at that. Uh, in October, we have two different events come, well, three different events. Rock, walk and Roll to School Day is October 4th. So there will be kids um, out in droves all over the county, walking, rolling um, to school. Uh, we're also having um, our monthly smart cycling class. And then we kind of go dark for the winter. So this might be the last chance to get in on that before, um, before the winter happens. And then on October 21st, we're having our first ever Bike Advocacy Summit um, that will be bringing together um, folks who are already our advocates but aren't and would like to be um, to uh, do edu some education and inspiration and sharing information among folks. So that again is coming up October 21st and all of that info is on bikesonoma.org. Thanks. Thank you, Aris. Anybody else in the room? Rob, do we have anybody on Zoom or phone? No one on Zoom is raising their hand. Okay, we will move on to uh, item number six one, the Action Transportation Plan Vision Goals and Draft Scope of Work. So, Tarina. So, Tarina is remote. There she is. Hi there. Thank you very much for allowing me to present to you virtually. Um, COVID cannot and will not keep me from this presentation since it's effectively our kickoff for the active transportation plan. And it's just far too exciting, right? Um, I wanna ask either Alyssa or Rob if anyone from Alta is in our waiting um, or in our attendees list. Yes, let me get. Um, okay, so while you promote them, um, I can let everyone in the room know that um, we have gone ahead and we have chosen a consultant for um, the update to the active transportation plan. After interviewing three firms, we chose Alta Planning and Design. And you may recognize that name because they did our, um, our 2018 Bike Ped Master Plan update. Um, and so we're really excited to have them back. And um, I know there's one, maybe two people from the consultant team who are attending today to listen into the discussion. Um, as I've said before, we're doing, um, we're, we're finalizing our scope of work this month. So they're attending um, out of the excitement and goodness of their hearts so they can hear what we have to say today. Um, and I see, yeah, Mauricio has joined. If Mauricio, you wanna introduce yourself and say hello. Hi, everybody. Um, Mauricio Hernandez. I'm a senior planning associate here at Alta Planning and Design. I also help lead the uh, Oakland uh, planning office. Uh, we're super excited to come back uh, and uh, present to you our ideas and very excited to uh, hear the ideas that you have today. So uh, again, thank you again for inviting us and uh, 
Tarina, I had no idea you had COVID. Thanks, Mauricio. Yeah, that's what I get for attending a really, a really fun conference, which, you know, I've been to it five or six times and never have gotten sick. So it got me this time. Um, yeah, thank you, Mauricio, for attending. Um, this is the PowerPoint that I will be giving today. Before I start, I wanted to give a huge thank you to Christina Panza at the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. She submitted a very large chunk of really cute photos from their Safe Routes to School program. And so in this PowerPoint and in the next PowerPoint that Rob's going to give, there's just, there are a lot of stinking cute pictures. And I'm so happy that we have these um, for really any presentation, but also because we can use them in our active transportation plan to highlight a lot of the good work that we're doing as well. Um, Rob, you can go to the next slide. I'm trying. Sorry. That's all right. It gives me a little time to breathe. If there's an awkward silence, it's because I'm just trying to breathe. Um, so <coughs> today I'm going to be covering um, the existing vision and goals that are in our bike ped master plan. I'm also going to show you vision and goals that are adopted in other active transportation plans and similar documents um, in the Bay Area. Um, and then we're gonna go through the consultant scope of work that Alta submitted as part of their proposal. Um, I'll let you know of our next steps. And then we're gonna have a discussion on what vision and goals you'd like to see in the active transportation plan update. And then any comments that you have on the draft scope of work. Next slide. And then next slide. Um, so the reason that we're presenting um, these items as one agenda item, I did have you advance too fast. I had one more thought, but it's all right. You can stay here. Um, so the reason that we're presenting these <coughs> items as, as one agenda item is because we want to foster a broader conversation about the direction that you want the active transportation plan to go. So the vision statement and our goals should directly reflect the desire um, that you have for the whole plan overall. And then the scope is how we're going to make sure that um, Alta helps us get to a plan that is a blueprint that will help us meet that vision and goal. Um, and that is also true for the next item that we're going to talk about today that Rob will present on, um, which is the work plan. But, you know, it's, it's all interrelated. So I just wanted to give a heads up that as we go into vision and goals and the scope, these two things are really closely aligned with one another. Um, and so this is gonna help us, you know, go in the direction that we'd like to. Now, next slide. Thank you. I'm gonna take a deep breath here. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so on this slide, you're gonna see um, the existing vision and goals that we have in our 2018 Bike Pet and Master Plan. Um, I usually don't like to read directly from slides that I present, but I think in this case, it's going to be pretty important so that we can all understand what we have and um, what's in the next examples that I'm going to be showing you. So the vision that we have in our plan right now is Santa Rosa is a community where walking and bicycling are comfortable, convenient, and common for people of all ages and abilities. And then we have three goals. Our first one is increase access and comfort, design bicycle and pedestrian facilities that are accessible and comfortable for people of all ages and abilities to use. The second one is maintain and expand the network, identify, develop, and maintain a complete and convenient bicycle and pedestrian network. And our third one is support a culture of walking and biking, increase awareness and support of bicycling and walking through programs and citywide initiatives. So you'll see that with our vision, and our goals. We already talk about a lot of the things that this board and our community talks about on an ongoing basis. We talk about um, comfort, convenience. We talk about all ages and abilities. We mention it um, twice within these, these items. Um, and then we also talk quite a bit about, in this last item, about programming. So we talk a little bit more um, we talk about a little more than just infrastructure. We also talk about programming, which is things like um, outreach and marketing that 
is going to help us shift behavior um, a little bit more than just infrastructure would do. We can go to the next slide. So this is the first example that I have for you. Um, I did get a comment from one board member asking if there were some more updated examples that I could show you. And I was really not able to find very many. I have one example in here from 2022. Um, I'm suspecting that um, COVID may have something to do with that, that there may have been a bit of a, um, a, a delay on some ATPs undergoing the process. But when we get to discussion, I might have Mauricio um, chime in to see if he has any more ideas of more um, up-to-date vision and goals examples. But this is the first one that I have for you. This is from the Son Sonoma County Transportation Authority, their 2014 Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. They have what's called a principal goal, and it states to develop and maintain a comprehensive countywide bicycle and pedestrian transportation system, which includes projects, programs, and policies that work together to provide safe and efficient transportation opportunities for bicyclists and pedestrians. And then they do not actually have goals. What they have is underneath this principal goal is the sentence in Sonoma County, bicycling and walking are. And then there's a long list of bullet points and I'm not gonna read all of them, but they talk about quality of life. They talk about interconnection, safety and convenience, um, encouraging easy connections to um, transit to help you know, um, increase you know, the, the um, reduction in single occupant vehicles, supporting education and enforcement, um, and then overall, just fostering an environment within their um, within the county that helps reduce vehicle miles traveled and greenhouse gas emissions. We can go to the next slide. This example is from the 2018 Petaluma Bike Ped Plan. Um, I know that they are undergoing an update right now, but their draft goals and um, vision are not currently on their web page. So I did have to pull from their 2018 example. Um, and they only have one overall goal, and it is to create and maintain a safe, comprehensive, and integrated bicycle and pedestrian system throughout Petaluma that encourages bicycling and walking and is accessible to all. Like I said, the update is not currently, um, or the update that they're undergoing currently does not show what their updated vision will be, but I do suspect that one change to this goal would be that they would expand that last um, little section to say, and is acceptable to um, people of all ages and abilities to be a bit more inclusive. Next slide. So this is the most recent example that I have. It's also the last example that I have for you today. It's from Contra Costa County. It's their active transportation plan, which was adopted in 2022. And they're similar to us, they have one vision and three goals. So their vision states Contra Costa County will have an equitable transportation system that supports active transportation for all ages and abilities, allowing all to travel conveniently, reliably, and free from harm. And they've got three goals and they are prioritize active transportation investments based on factors such as collision history or systemic risk, location in an impacted community, location near uh, key destinations and funding opportunities. The second is shift trip modes in Contra Costa County residents and visitors from motor vehicles to active modes such as walking and biking to create a more sustainable community and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And the third is provide a vision for arterials and collectors within the unincorporated county roadway network to assist county departments in planning for private development, capital projects, and maintenance efforts. You can go to the next slide. So that was the end of the um, vision and goals. I am gonna go over the draft scope of work before we go into the um, larger discussion. Those three examples are also in your staff report. So you can, um, you can review those at any time throughout the discussion as well. Next slide. So the draft scope of work, um, which is also in your staff report, um, this is what Alta submitted as part of their proposal. Um, there have been no changes to this um, since Alta did provide this in the proposal. There are seven tasks and there are a few optional tasks. Um, city staff does have some uh, comments on this draft scope of work. 
they're not very um, substantial. And so uh, we're really hoping that you have some comments today. Um, you know, if you have any specific preferences of things that you would like to see or um, things that you, you think we could add it a little bit, we'd like to hear from you. Next slide. And I'm gonna briefly go through each of the tasks here. Um, there are, let me turn to my notes. There's two specific items within the scope where I'm gonna give you a little bit of background on what they are, particularly because I found them to be really intriguing and I'm excited to um, be able to see something like that. So task one is very standard. Um, it, it includes our kickoff meeting uh, with the consultant and ongoing meetings that um, would be similar within any scope. Task two is existing conditions and data collection. Again, this is something that's pretty standard in a lot of scopes of work for any project, but there's a couple items in here that I think are very interesting. Um, so one thing that's pretty standard is an active transportation network inventory. Um, a few things I thought was interesting was the safety analysis and then also an analysis of equity priority communities. Um, another pretty standard item is a uh, bicycle and pedestrian level of stress analysis. So we can understand um, of the existing facilities that we have, what's the level of stress on those facilities. Um, there's also an active trip potential. This is one that I wanted to highlight because I thought that it was pretty interesting. So the active trip potential is an analysis to identify trips where um, the distance to a destination is short enough that someone could make it by biking or walking, but they're not. Um, so what Alta would look at is what services or land uses are near those trips to help us determine where we have community members living in or near a high activity area that are not walking and biking. And we could use this data to see where we could prioritize improvements because a behavior shift in a location like that could potentially be easier than elsewhere. Um, and then all of these items are going to coalesce into an existing condition summary that will then inform the rest of the plan. Next slide. Task three is public engagement. Um, we always start with undergoing a public engagement plan, which is going to help outline the, the entire public engagement process. There will be uh, several times that we come to the BPAB for discussion of um, you know, items that we are, have, have just finished up a draft of, or if we're moving into another item and we'd like to have some of your feedback. There's also going to be a series of pop-up engagement. Uh, pop-up engagement is where you go to where the community is, so they're rather informal events. Um, you know, if you've ever been at a farmer's market or some other event, where there's a, you know, a city tent and a table and there's information and they ask you to take a survey. That's usually what a pop-up is like. There would also be a series of public meetings. These would be the more formal community engagement meetings like workshops. There would also be online outreach, which would include um, a project survey. And then it would also include a web map. And our goal for that web map would be that it's a, a, a map of the entire community and then um, residents would be able to drop a pin and they could make a comment. Um, so maybe they could drop a pin and say, you know, there's a gap in the sidewalk right here. Um, and then ideally it would be in a platform where someone else could then comment um, and say that they support or, you know, maybe have an edit to somebody else's comment. And then there would be a series of stakeholder engagement as well. Um, task four, city staff will have some edits to this task. The way that it's written right now is that Alta will help us draft goals and objectives, and then they would finalize those goals and objectives. Um, obviously, tonight, uh, we're talking a little bit about, or not a little bit, we're talking a lot about um, vision and goals uh, for the ATP. And so some of what's written in this task right now, we're not going to need. Um, so there will be a, a little bit of changes to that task. Next slide. So task five is an analysis of our overall active transportation network. Um, one of these items is a 15 minute city analysis. 
This is another item that I wanted to highlight because I was particularly excited when I saw this in the scope. Um, so a 15 minute city analysis is a mapping exercise where Alta will identify important services such as schools, libraries, and grocery stores, and then compare those land uses with um, their previously mentioned low stress analysis to see where we have these uses and whether they're accessible with low stress active transportation infrastructure. So a 15 minute city is a movement, um, if you haven't heard of it, it's a movement um, where that advocates for all residents being living within a 15 minute um, walk, bike or transit ride from all essential services. And so the idea behind this task is that if we know um, where there's potential for us to have 15 minute city nodes within Santa Rosa, and we can figure out whether or not the trips to the services from each residence are low stress or not, we can figure out you know, where we need to prioritize improvements. Because again, those are gonna be trips where it might be a little bit easier to influence a behavior shift. Um, the second task, uh, subtask within task five is a climate mitigation benefit scenario. Um, and then these two items, um, they would coalesce into a summary of our active transportation network, which would then move us into tax, task six, which is um, Alta would give us a list of their network recommendations for both bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure. They would give us policy recommendations, um, a network prioritization, um, and then as part of that network prioritization, there would be cost estimates, um, a list of potential funding sources, and then a maintenance strategy. So that would help us um, uh, continue to, you know, figure out how we would prioritize improvements, but then also making sure that we can maintain all of the changes that we make over time. Next slide. I think you might have went ahead one. Two, yep, there we go. Um, so task seven is uh, very standard again. So this is just the, the putting together of the plan. So we're gonna have a couple drafts of this plan. There's gonna be the administrative draft, which is where city staff reviews it, make sure that we feel like all of the comments that we've been giving to Alta over time have been received and accommodated. And then um, they send a second draft back that addresses all of our comments. And that becomes the public draft plan. Uh, and then you have the final plan and the final plan presentation. And then there's also a list of optional tasks within the scope. Um, I'm not gonna go into these at this point, but these items are project data sheets, warrant analyses, project branding and logo development, active transportation audits, and then conceptual plans for proposed projects. Um, at this point, city staff does not think that we need uh, many or if any of these optional tasks, um, we had some specific questions for Alta on, you know, um, does any of these items get us farther than what we would get within the scope? And, and we feel pretty confident that what's already in the scope that's not optional is um, very strong. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, next slide. Now for next steps, uh, city staff's gonna be working with Alta to prepare, prepare the final scope of work and to draft the first iteration of the vision and goals. Um, as I said in the beginning, scope edits are not gonna be too substantial. It's largely, largely gonna consist of moving hours around um, and adding and removing small components. And then the final uh, scope of work and the draft vision and goals we're gonna to present to you at the November meeting. So you're gonna see them again. Um, and then <clears throat> the vision and goals throughout the project process, they're gonna be working draft. And so when you see them in November, it's by no means the final thing that's gonna be included in the plan because there's always the chance that we learn something along the way and we decide, you know, we wanna make a little bit of a, a word tweak, which is entirely possible. Um, for a recommendation for today, there's no action needed. All we'd like from you is uh, to provide input on the active transportation plan, draft scope of work, and then also provide direction to us that will help us uh, draft some vision and goals for you to review in November. That's all I've got. Thank you, Tarina. 
So we'll start by taking uh, questions from the board, then we'll go to the public for comment and then coming back to the board for further comments. So are there any questions uh, about any of these things from the board before we go to school? As I was listening to Tarina talk, it occurred to me, I'm not fully clear on the difference between identifying the active trip potential and identifying the 15 minute, minute city potential. Perhaps I can tackle that, Tarina, is that okay? Yeah, so um, the active trip potential really is basically looking at which trips that are already being done right now and any type of trip that are less than one mile for uh, people walking and less than three miles uh, for people biking, which of those trips can we actually transform into biking and or walking if uh, we make improvements into the different uh, facilities that are there. Um, currently, most people don't may not be walking in that one mile trip. They may be taking a, a single occupancy vehicle because they may not have facilities uh, or appropriate facilities. So that's what we're looking for in that particular uh, uh, um, analysis. Um, the one that's it's very much related, but a little different is really figuring figuring out whether there are correct routes and. This also provides us an understanding of where um, there are any gaps in the, uh, what is it called, in the network that we can address that those locations. So for example, the schools, uh, grocery stores, those are things that we look into or parks, uh, if they all have um, ways for them or for people to access them within uh, their neighborhoods. So basically we're looking at neighborhood destinations uh, providing those locations or providing good routes for those locations to neighborhood destinations. Does that make sense? Any other questions from the board? No, nope. I had one question, uh, Mauricio. Maybe you can uh, explain to me the project data sheets. What's that about? The optional component? Sure. Um, so we tend to do that for many plants nowadays. We are seeing more and more Caltrans requiring just basically basic explanations of the projects, providing some uh, additional context, perhaps some 10% design concepts for each of the projects that are being, or for the top five projects that are being uh, 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 promoted in the plan. So following our recommendations, we would be developing 10% concepts for each, each of the top five so uh, projects. Um, and we would include some details in those uh, data sheets, basically. And those data sheets can actually be used uh, uh, to apply for or to go after ATP. They're very much ready to use. Uh, so we would, the cities that we've worked with in the past are now treating them as ready uh, ready to apply for grants. So you don't really need to do any additional details on that because you have all of the details there, like how long, uh, how much, uh, what it would look like, and some additional data related to public engagement that is now required by ATP and other uh, grant uh, programs. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? No? And then we'll go to public comments. So. If you are in the room and you have comments on this, you can line up over by the microphone. And if you are participating via Zoom, you can raise your hand or from a phone, you can dial star nine. Mm, I'm <laughs> They're active people. <laughs> I'm just a little worried about the microphone. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Hi, I'm Jim McAdler. I'm a volunteer with the Southeast Greenway campaign. I take it this on. Uh, many people are hesitant to take a bike or pedestrian path because it's not is safe. That, is that microphone on? I think it's on. A little closer. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, 
as I was saying, I believe many people are hesitant to take a bike and safe uh, bike and pedestrian path because it's not safe and or it's not comfortable or uh, easy. Uh, if you're walking or running, you have to be especially cautious of passing bikes. Uh, likewise, if you're on a bike, you have to be especially aware of walkers and runners. Add equitable access and safety becomes even a much more important issue. This is why we need two separate bike and pedestrian paths on the Southeast Greenway and wherever else possible in our updated active transportation plan. I do not own a uh, pedal assist e-bike yet, but it's clear that e-bikes are becoming more prevalent because they help riders pedal easier and go faster. In fact, e-bikes are a great way to help people get out of their cars and to help protect our climate. I'm thinking about the impacts of e-bikes on the future Southeast Greenway, which by the way, in case you don't know, is a two mile long swath of land, someday to be a city park. Currently the Southeast Greenway has in the city's bicycle and pedestrian master plan, a connecting class one bike path from Montgomery High School to Spring Lake Park. This path became part of the master plan in 2011. The Southeast Greenway will provide a beautiful outdoor excursion for pedestrians and cyclists alike, but we need paths that are safe and easy for pedestrians as well as for cyclists, in particular taking into account e-bikes. This can be done by having two separate paths, one for pedestrians and one for cyclists. One of the paths can also be used for emergency access vehicles. Thank you for your consideration of considering separate paths in your active transportation plan. Thank you. Go ahead. My name is Vincent Hoagland, and I'm a member of the Sonoma County Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. And I'm also, as you can see, wearing a Greenway shirt, and I'm sort of the bicycle advocate for the Greenway. Um, I live in the county, but I also frequently ride my bike into Santa Rosa to do different kinds of errands. The staff report concerning the active transportation plan update has visions and goals and that there are three goals and two of which I wanted to talk about specifically. Design number one, design bicycle and pedestrian facilities that are accessible and comfortable for people of all ages and abilities to use. Maintain and expand the network, identify, develop and maintain a complete and convenient bicycle and pedestrian network. Now, as Jim just commented about, there, we are, the city has approved making the Southeast Greenway into a park in perpetuity. And so that's one of the things that I'm really concerned about. Um, as he's commented, that we're going to have parallel bicycle and pedestrian paths. My concern is that the city designed safe routes through the city streets to make this a continuous pathway from the West County to the East County. Uh, connect the West County Trail, the Joe Redota Trail, the Fritz Greenway, the um, Santa Rosa Creek Trail. Be able to con connect that basically at the end of Santa Rosa, off of, off of uh, Petaluma Hill, uh, Santa Rosa Avenue, and being able to get, get through the city streets over to where the Greenway will start, because then on the east side of the Greenway pathway through Spring Lake Park, there are planned to be county class one bike lanes separated from Highway One to be able to get all the way into Sonoma. So I think that this would be a valuable and safe way to connect the West County with the Eastern part of Sonoma County using active transport. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. 
Hi, Chris Eggers, Santa Rosa, member of Bikeable Santa Rosa. Um, I am wondering if Alta has read the City Thread report. Uh, they just did an analysis of our bike network and active transportation. And they had some recommendations in there. And number one being having created 25 miles of contiguous low stress bike network in Santa Rosa. And I would like to see some specific numbers in the active transportation plan. I understand we're just in the beginning parts of it, but I'm very excited about this process. It seems like an opportunity for us to have very ambitious goals and to achieve them. I, I see it as an incredible opportunity. So I'm hoping that Alta, if they have not already, would take the time to read the city thread recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Chris Harris. Looking at the existing vision and goals, actually, I've got to make this taller. Or I'll just do it this way. Uh, looking at the the existing vision and goals, there there's nothing bad or wrong about them, but they're just so bland, right? I, I want I want us to go bigger. You know, the the city the the draft of the general plan talks about prioritizing active transportation over vehicles. They're being more visionary about active transportation in that plan than this plan is that's supposedly about active transportation. So I re really hope that that gets more um, expanded, you know, because comfortable, convenient, common, that's just, that's just bland. Um, <coughs> I loved the, the mention in the Contra Costa uh, vision about specifically calling out mode shift. We don't want, just want to make this easy. We want to get more people to actually do it. Right, we want to get more people uh, in trips that are under three miles using active transportation. The third goal in talking about culture shift and and Tarina mentioned, you know, other kinds of programming and education stuff. You know, when we're talking about uh, you know public health behavior change, we talk about the five E's: education, encouragement, engineering, evaluation, enforcement, and equity. The bike coalition and the bike clubs and a lot of other organizations around the Taco Tuesday folks, we got the education and the encouragement stuff down pat. What we can't do is the engineering and the enforcement. We need the city to do that. So we don't need more education programs done by the city unless you want to give us money to do it because we already know how to do it well. But we need you to fix the streets because we can't do that, right? Um, Let's see, what else did I have to say? I think that was it, thank you. Thank you, Iris. <coughs> Hi, my name is Thea Hensel and I'm co-chair of the Southeast Greenway campaign and I'm also on the Bike Coalition board. I have just a couple of things and first I wanna say, as Vin mentioned before, thank you for putting the class one bike lane on the, uh, Greenway before it was ever even zoned. So that sort of set the model for everything else that has gotten us to the place right now where the city's gonna own that property soon. And it's gonna become vital for us to partner with you folks as we go through a park plan to make sure it's in sync with whatever your plans are as well. We think it's really important, again, it was mentioned for there to be two bikeways and we really, a bike and a pedestrian pathway, and we understand that's a heavy lift. We're gonna to have to raise a lot of money to get that done, but we feel like we really wanna take this 2.2 miles of uh, pedestrian and bike pathways and make it as usable and friendly as it possibly can be. I want to, because the connectivity is so important, when you do plans, if you could take a look at Summerfield, at the entrance through the park, at Franquette, at Yalupa, at all of those busy crossings and say, how can we make these easy for people to get on the, on the Greenway? I think some of this would be ideal and wonderful if these could be looked at as class four bike lanes, but certainly some sort of a protected way so people can get to the Greenway. Connectivity is really important. So I hope that there are links. I don't know if Farmer's Lane Extension is ever gonna happen, but if it does, we wanna make sure that Cooper <coughs> Creek and whole, that whole area down there around Kiwana Springs is easy and safe to get to as well. I think, oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that there are six schools, high school, middle school, elementary schools, within a few blocks of the Greenway. It makes total sense to cut down vehicle miles traveled 
and get these kids on bikes. And the way to do that is to make it safe and easy for them. So please consider that and look at all the surrounding areas of the Greenway because there's ideal situations to really make that area safe and certainly um, shift traffic nodes. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, Chris Gunther with Bikeable Santa Rosa. Uh, I, my thoughts are extensive. Uh, time is short and I'm sleep deprived, so I'm probably going to do a bad job uh, at this, but um, I'll, I'll sort of rattle off uh, as quickly as I can. So on the vision, uh, I think, you know, to the extent that the vision is useful, uh, I think the, the examples that were shown that were more specific are quite encouraging. I really like our existing vision, uh, but I think one of its weaknesses is that it talks about biking as an end in itself, rather than something that enables a lot of other things. I liked the county plan um, and the way that it uh, made some of those connections. Um, so for what that's worth, I think we should try to make it strong and make it connect to other attributes, um, the other community goals that I think are essential. Um, I also want to shout out for walking. We're going to talk a lot about biking. That's who we are. And, and that's really key for sort of longer distance mobility. But I hope that some of the community engagement can really get after walking advocates so we can flesh that out more as well. Um, but also on the vision, you know, I said before, I like the current vision. Unfortunately, it feels like there's a lot of work to do to realize it. And I would really hate if we're standing here in five years or in 10 years and liking our old vision, but still being frustrated with what the conditions on the streets are. So I think what I really wanna ask uh, as, as part of this process is how do we use the plan to um, really think about what is possible or even better what is likely as a result of this process? The vision only goes so far in that respect. And so I think the, the actual fundamental outputs of the plan are, are more important. Um, which I'm sure everybody agrees with. Uh, as regards that, you know, on the scope, um, I think some of the components in there are really, really great and really encouraging. The active trip potential um, and the 15 minute city analysis are especially interesting to me. Uh, there's been some comments about some of the off street paths. I think they're really important. They're sort of backbones of the network. They're great for longer distance, continuous travel, um, when you need to connect across the city, and that's really part of this vision, that's part of the making the network viable, they're not useful if they don't connect to anything else. So I can ride all the way across town on the Joe Dodo Trail, but then I have to at some point get off at Stony Point or Dutton or any of a variety of other places and face the gauntlet. So I hope that we can address that. The last thing is on the process. I am really hopeful that something bold comes out of this plan I hope that we are thoughtful about what is necessary, not just what is possible, but I'm worried about what happens if it seems too radical and it gets constrained before we finish the plan. So I hope that we can be thoughtful about how to navigate that. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Abigail Zoger. I teach at Santa Rosa Junior College and I would like to stress the urgency of this problem. And it's, it's because, first of all, I see my students who need a car to get everywhere. And cars are expensive and it drains away their time and money that they have for focusing on their education because they have to work jobs to support the car and support the insurance so they can get the car, so they can get to work and they can get to school. And those are people's lives that are happening right now in this moment in our extremely financially challenging county. So these are real problems that we can solve. The second thing that I wanna point out because of a project my students are doing that I don't know if you're aware that UCLA did a study of diabetic rates by county, ethnicity, et cetera, across the whole state. Sonoma County in 2016 had 49% of its population was pre-diabetic. That's huge. 10% is diabetic at that time. And then they said, within the next five years, 30% of those pre-diabetic people will become diabetic. Well, we're already five years past that time. And um, the county and the city spend a lot of money to try and help people with prediabetes. And what they want people to do is eat healthy food and they want them to move. And it's really hard to move in an easy way in this city, in this county, because cars dominate and it's too dangerous. 
And so I want to call attention to research that was done by the New England Journal of Medicine, where they looked at a 15 year study in Europe of diabetics and the risk of diabetic complications based on their bicycling behavior. And there was a significant drop, over 30% drop in diabetic complications with people who bicycled one to five hours a week. That's what you do if you're going to work or to school. And we spend so much money and lose so many people's health and lives to diabetes and other health problems that could be solved by things as simple as being able to walk to your grocery store, walk to school, bicycle to your job, get exercise. We've engineered all the exercise out of our lives. And as a consequence, the health of our county is suffering right now. So I love this plan, but it all has this leisurely tone to it of, well, we're gonna have these studies and we're gonna talk to these people and then we're gonna try and build these things. And meanwhile, people's lives are being destroyed right now by things that we know how to solve. And frankly, we're spending money on in other ways. So the prudent way to spend our money is to make it healthier and easier for people to live their lives so we don't have to spend money on horrible medical you know, interventions later on. So that is what I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Laura Nish. I'm the executive director of 350 Bay Area, which is a climate change organization. And one of our local groups is 350 Sonoma. And uh, we have sort of this huge opportunity in front of us to make a real difference. Both Santa Rosa and the state have ambitious climate goals. And Santa Rosa is officially declared a climate emergency. And right now our biggest source of uh, emissions is coming from transportation because we've done a pretty good job reducing emissions coming from uh, generating uh, electricity and we're working on our buildings and, and all the other sectors. <clears throat> but this is a really exciting opportunity to get people out of their cars with all of the health benefits that Abigail pointed to. And uh, the, the plan should really there's no such thing as too bold a plan at this point in time. When you have a bikeable, walkable community, you have a vibrant, active community that makes everybody feel better. So it's not just healthier, it, it is better at driving community as people are out on uh, the streets that are safe for them to be on. So please be very ambitious with this goal and uh, don't just think about you know the the counting the emissions impact, but think about driving the, the vehicle miles traveled down as quickly as possible with this plan. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Jenny Bard and I am president of the uh, Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition and a member of uh, Bikeable Santa Rosa. And I think I consider myself a member of the Greenway. Certainly support, I support them. Um, and I served on, I think, the city's first bicycle and pedestrian advisory committee back in the early 2000s. So I think this is my third plan. And I'm really excited to be here and to hear this discussion, um, the vision and the goals and the very specific things that need to be in this plan to make sure that we're going to really get there because we've had many plans and we have a long way to go. So this plan has to get it right. And I totally support what Era said and uh, others about the need for boldness. Um, I was listening as you read or we read the Contra Costa, the latest um, by Comped vision that's just been put up 2022. Contra Costa will have an equitable transportation system that supports. That word has to be one of the worst words to ever appear in a plan because it has no teeth. And as you heard, our general plan now is stating we're gonna be prioritizing over vehicle travel investments in active transportation. So I would encourage you to make sure that every word in this document strengthens that, um, that prioritization in every way that you can. Um, also, obviously the equitable investments in our city's working class neighborhoods, that came out of the city thread report, which is so important. And I would just add to that, if there can be an analysis of high crash areas of the city for bicycles and pedestrians and to prioritize those improvements to those areas to reduce injuries and save lives. Um, also, uh, 
just looking at protected intersections. It's a sort of a thing, um, what I read about them, uh, they're Dutch style, and it's a type of at-grade road junction in which cyclists and pedestrians are separated from cars. And the primary aim is to help pedestrians and cyclists feel and be safer at road junctions. So that would be an important piece. Um, I would love you to look at and what you're doing um, on looking at best practices around the country, and the world to incorporate into this plan. And um, Mauricio, I just wanna say hello. Uh, Eris and I met you at the San Jose Ciclovia event, and I would encourage our plan to have in, to, in, to incorporate regular Ciclovia events in our city as a key way to educate and engage and incorporate our neighborhoods into getting on their bicycles and showing them how fun it can be. Four times a year, every single neighborhood, let's do Ciclovia events. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. My name is Crispin Como, and I'm a new resident of Santa Rosa from Sebastopol. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I, um, I'm an avid bicyclist and a member of the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition, and I've just become aware of the Greenway Project. I took a great walking tour led by Thea, and I learned so much. Um, I love the idea of the Greenway connecting to Spring Lake. I can just see so many people taking advantage of that. But I do think it's important to have a separate bike lane and pedestrian lane um, because of the incline up to, to Spring Lake. And I can just see those bike, bicycles zooming down and um, it would be good to have a separate bike lane, pedestrian lane. Thank you. Thank you. Doesn't look like we have any more comments from the room. Rob, do we have any on Zoom? We do. Um, I will start with Adrian, Adrian, I'm giving you the ability to speak. Great, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Adrian Covert. I'm a resident of downtown and a local lead for Santa Rosa Yimby. That is yes in my backyard to pro uh, housing and the transportation infrastructure that we need to make housing uh, possible and to keep Santa Rosa affordable and accessible for future generations. And so uh, housing is obviously very important to us. Uh, that's, we are primarily a housing group. We just completed the housing element a few months ago, the city did, which calls for about 4,000 new homes in this city over the next eight years, mostly centered in the downtown station area. And to make this work, we really need a world-class pedestrian and bike infrastructure to make it so safe and pleasant to walk and bike in the city, people won't want to drive. The old bike and pedestrian master plan called for just one new mile of protected bike lanes over the next two decades. And that is just not gonna cut it. So we have to be very, uh, we have a, a very important opportunity here to correct course. And I'm really encouraged by the active transportation plans goals that I've heard today to focus on comfort and supporting a culture of walking and biking. But it sounds like biking is mostly about recreation or health, which of course it does support that. But the need is even bigger in that biking and pedestrian infrastructure is essential for meeting the city's housing goals and economic future. Um, and that's, that element of it is not really reflected in the current goals that, that we've heard today. So let's expand and be bold with the goals. And just as important, let's be specific with the actions needed to accomplish the goals. For example, if we're really truly focused on comfort and supporting the culture of biking and walking, we have to focus on creating more class four protected lanes. I'm afraid there is no other way, no amount of education is going or outreach is going to shift the needle. We need the infrastructure. That's gonna involve some hard dis discussions with the city council and with the fire department, but that's a hill we gotta die on. And I bring this up because we're running into this same problem with the circulation element, in which case, as several people have mentioned, the narrative makes plain the goal is to reduce VMTs. But then several of the actions include recommendations that would specifically increase VMTs. Uh, so we're going through that process there too. So the actions are at least as important as the goals. So in short, I just wanna emphasize that the discussion here with bikes and the opportunity here isn't just about recreation or 
making it a way of life um, for, for health reasons. It's an essential component to meeting this city's uh, housing goals and its economic future. So thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Do we uh, have any more? Yes, we have several. Uh, next would be CHOPS Teen Club. Hi, friends. Kevin Anderson here, uh, father, partner, program director at CHOPS Teen Club, youth mentor, climate educator, um, someone that absolutely thinks we have an opportunity here in Santa Rosa to be a world-class city. Uh, we are not there yet, but the bones are good here. Uh, our, our creek system, while underutilized, connects a lot of parts of the city parts of the city with a bold plan, as many have already mentioned today. We really could be a, a world-class city. Um, not just cycling, but pedestrian oriented as well. I think both of those are very, very important. Um, I've heard it called a walkable city. Obviously today, a 15 minute city there has been mentioned, but we have quite, quite an opportunity. Um, yes, I want something that's achievable, um, but I don't think um, it's too lofty or, or too bold to, to talk about being able to get to any public school, any school, any library, any park in Santa Rosa, as big as the city as it is, it's flat. The weather's beautiful here year round. We don't have to, and and, and thank God, um, BPAB, uh, you brought Alta planning in. They have plenty of examples throughout the county, or out the country. Um, I lived in Palo Alto. That's when I became a utility cyclist because Palo Alto has some very basic bike boulevards. Berkeley is another good example, but Palo Alto has some bike boulevards with bollards in the middle, making it very easy, 50% of K through 12 youth bike to school in Palo Alto. Santa Rosa could be doing that too. I say this as someone that has led hundreds of rides over my young life, both in the in San Mateo County and now also in Sonoma County. And I say this with a very heavy heart, I cannot recommend my own child ride to school by herself. So I would encourage um, BPAB to borrow and adapt best practices, but recognize that it should be safe all ages. And this is someone that breaks my heart to say it, but I, I can't recommend my father-in-law and my mother-in-law who we do some caretaking for to ride as well. Um, many places are okay. Um, and, and they're fine with me as a, as a 40 year old male that can pretty much get anywhere, including hills in San Francisco, but not certainly when you're talking about um, youth or elderly. So please be bold, um, reach out to our community community partners. And one more plug here, involve the youth in this process. And I'm not talking about tokenization, I'm talking about authentic engagement. Ask them, ask them what would make it feel more safe for them. Get, get them out on their bikes when they, when they do those rides. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next we have Lauren. Or and I give you permission to speak. Hi, good afternoon, members of the board and other people from the community. Uh, thank you for your time today and your commitment to this critical work on behalf of the people of Santa Rosa. My name is Lauren Fury and I'm a Santa Rosa resident, a daily dog walker, a bike commuter, an affordable housing developer, and also a member of the local EMB chapter. I'm here today to ask you to heed our community's cry to create a bold vision for Santa Rosa's future um, and a vision that leaves behind the car-centric development of the last century. As several other people have said, we live in a remarkable and lovely place. We enjoy great weather year round. Uh, we have not one, but two downtowns. And unlike almost anywhere else in the North Bay, we have neighborhoods with distinct character spread across a mostly flat city. Santa Rosa could and should be a walking and biking paradise. But currently we don't have a safe, convenient, or most importantly, a fully connected network of bike and pedestrian infrastructure in our city. Uh, piecemeal improvements to the existing networks are simply not enough to encourage the vast majority of people to leave their car to walk or bike the street instead. 
Um, I'd be remiss not to point out that active modes of transportation directly support our city's goals to build and build and enhance equity for all of our residents. Uh, greater walkability and bikeability increases access to job opportunities, education, healthcare, and recreational spaces. Active transit improves health outcomes and air quality. Um, so this isn't just a matter of convenience, it's a matter of social justice and inclusivity. Lastly, our city is growing and the future is density. Uh, new local and state laws strongly prioritize mid and high density infill developments with no or low car parking requirements. While this is great news for our planet and for the many members of our community who struggle under the high cost of housing, uh, it poses challenges without the correct bike and pedestrian plan in place. Uh, these changes in create opportunities for vibrant connected neighborhoods. But once again, only if we have a safe, convenient and fully integrated network for people to use when walking or biking around. The alternative is air pollution, traffic congestion, and in Joni Mitchell's eternal words, a paved paradise. Uh, so please, I ask you to dream big in setting an ambitious vision for Santa Rosa's active transportation plan and mapping the path to a just and resilient future for our city. Thanks again for your time today. Thank you. Okay, we have Mark, I'm giving you permission to speak. Oh, thank you. Yes, as you know, my name is Mark Franizek. I live in East Santa Rosa. I want to say I really like the active transport plan we just went through. I really like the goals, but my concern is at the end of five years, that's pretty much all we're going to end up with. It's just a, a beautiful plan and barely anything done. You know, maybe there'll be, you know, two, three more miles of protected bikeway, you know, a few more safe crossing places, but nothing that approaches a usable active transport network. So what I'd really like to see in the plan would be numeric goals. So there can be some accountability. So instead of saying we're going to encourage walking and biking, you know, say, we're going to set a goal by 2028 to add 30 miles of protected bikeway and 50 miles of uh, low traffic, you know, safe multimodal streets. Um, at least that way, you know, in 2028, there can be some accountability and, you know, we can look at our strategy of planning if this just is not getting done. You know, maybe the current planning procedure with where we have endless meetings and polls and you know round and round in circles for like a whole year um you know we can have something like quick build where we can just slap down some bollards and see how it goes um but anyway that's kind of neither here nor there for the purposes of this uh comment but um again i'd want to see some specific goals in there because otherwise we just have a beautiful plan and probably not a lot to show for it at the end of five years and uh I think it's my whole goal. I mean, my whole uh, comment. So thanks very much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Minona. I've given you permission to speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, uh, can. My name's Minona Haviland and I live in Santa Rosa. I have two kids that go to school and I was actually <laughs> pleasantly surprised to see that you have a picture of my daughter on the front of the plan. That was, I think, back when she was in first grade, just missing her two front teeth. We did some safe routes to school, um, advocacy events, and um, um, I've been um, looking forward to improvements in biking and, and walking in Santa Rosa for several years now, and sadly, not that many improvements have ha happened since in the last well, she's my daughter's in middle school now, so I think that was five or six years ago. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> that threw me for a little bit, but I'm pleasant. I'm glad that everyone's here now, and um, I just had a couple points to make about the plan. One is that I would really like to see there be a goal of having connected routes across town that are are um, clearly marked and connected. Two um, north south routes on either side of 101 and two east-west routes on either side of 12, um, which means improving the crossing of the 101. 
Um, so keeping that um, pedestrian bicycle overcrossing and trying to actually implement that. Um, and then having connected routes. And when I say connected routes, I mean addressing the problematic intersections that make it unsafe for people of all ages to um, do bike routes. I um, I uh, I bike to work a short short distance, um, and there's there's just some um, you know I think everybody here knows where the problematic intersections are, particularly on the um, multi lane through roads in Santa Rosa. Um, some call them strodes, or neither a street nor a road. Um, so addressing some of those, so making um, crossing safer. And then the other thing that I'd like to see in the plan is really looking at our schools and working out from the schools of how to make it safer for uh, children to uh, bike and walk to school. Uh, they're um, just looking at the, the high schools, the approach to um, Montgomery High School, there's several improvements that could be made. The approach to Santa Rosa High School um, improving uh, bike routes and crossings of um, Mendocino Avenue. Um, I, there are lots of things to address, but I just want to give some specific ideas and particularly this idea of making connected through routes for bicycles through town and having a goal of them really being clearly marked and um, all the intersections addressed within those connected routes. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes the uh, Zoom comments. I do have one email to read through. So class two bikeways are usually a waste of time for everyone. Sonoma Avenue is a good illustration of why class two bike lanes are a distraction from building safe, effective infrastructure. The bike lanes on Sonoma Avenue are wide, straight, well-marked, and in a city that has nearly continuous good weather for cycling. Despite these clear advantages, they're seldom used. With only paint on the ground for protection, citizens can hardly blame this for a lack of interest. Only one out of 10 cyclists slash pedestrians will survive a collision with a car going just 40 miles an hour. Furthermore, uh, Sonoma Avenue provides the added disincentive of being doored uh, when a car door suddenly opens into the path of a cyclist. It's no surprise people are staying away. We need to end this farce that paint on the ground or empty buffer zones constitute a protection from fast moving five ton vehicles. Instead, Santa Rosa should comply or should copy its infrastructure ideas from the cities where cycling is widely used for transportation like Copenhagen or Munster. They have developed a network of low stress streets where bikes and cars can safely mix. This works because at speeds below 20, a collision with a car is not a death sentence. It's worth noting that the probability of death for a cyclist or pedestrian goes up exponentially as a car's speed increases. So at lower speeds, mixing is quite safe. On streets with faster moving traffic, real protection is deployed in the form of bollards, concrete planters, and lines of parked cars to create a substantial barrier protected, protecting cyclists and pedestrians. The upshot for this is that people are safe. So all ages, abilities, engaging in cycling transportation. So all ages engage in cycling and transportation. In the city of Copenhagen, nearly 60% of all daily trips are done with bicycling. I believe this is the direct result of good cycling infrastructure and not perpetuating the failed transportation ideas of North America cities as are a, <coughs> a re resilient, a resilient, resilient on class two bikeways being one of the most uh, precocious. Uh, if you want people to use active transport, class four bike lanes or in low stress traffic streets are the name of the game. Anything else is just a diversion. Thank you for your time. And that concludes all the messages. Thank you, Rob. So that uh, brings us back to discussion by the board. Uh, Dylan, do you want to grab that microphone for your side over there? Anybody want to start? Paul? 
you know, I was thinking as Eris was talking about all the education programs that they've got going on, it got me thinking, well, why are people still riding the wrong side of the road and on sidewalks? And so it's not the fault of the education, it's people being people. And we're talking a lot about infrastructure to avoid bicycle auto conflicts, but I would also like to see some elements in this plan to mitigate and minimize the bicycle bicycle conflicts and bicycle pedestrian conflicts because people get get hurt being hit by a bike at 20 miles an hour if they're walking and don't see it coming so i think that we don't want to be just focusing on the auto bicycle conflict but also these other uh, modes of injury and death thank you paul anybody else the other side maybe <laughs> Tanya? Is that on? Yes, all right. So first I want to just say a huge thanks to everyone who shared public comments today. I feel uh, very inspired and actually was feeling a bit emotional by some of the comments just because I hear people talking about a vision of what Santa Rosa can be and will be um, hopefully with this plan. So that is very exciting and inspiring to me. So I just wanna say a huge thank you to everyone who was here on Zoom and in person. Um, I heard several people comment about wanting our vision and goals to be bold and ambitious. And I, I should say here, I don't have like a proposed vision and goals right now. I, I would have to think more about it, but I would definitely like to see reflected in that vision and goals, something very bold and ambitious that we really set our, our sights high. Um, I also resonated with the comments about um, the plan helping Santa Rosa become a world-class bike, biking and walking city. I think that's very important. Um, I also appreciated the connections that were made to our other goals, like helping the importance of this plan, helping us meet our housing goals, our climate goals. So perhaps putting the vision and goals, putting something in the vision and goals that sets that context as well. Um, our current goals don't address safety directly. So I would like to see safety mentioned um, in the goals and also reducing BMT. Um, and I think those were my comments related to the goals. And then on the scope, I don't recall if, if we have anything in the scope about addressing um, the impacts of our uh, e-mobility solutions like e-bikes, scooters. So making sure that in our plan, we're addressing and thinking forward about how those new modes of mobility could impact our transportation network and how we need to take those into, into account. So those are my comments. Thank you, Tanya. Maybe, Mauricio, do you have a, uh, anything to say about those e-mobility uh, solutions in the scope? Not overt. I should say not overtly, but yeah, a number of jurisdictions have pushed for this to be included as part of their plans in more and more jurisdictions, particularly those that where e-bikes are already pushing more cars. I think Palo Alto is one of them that are, uh, they really brought that up when we uh, talked to them. Thank you. Any other comments, Elizabeth? I wanted to thank everybody for coming today and for all the comments. I think this might be the most commenters we've ever had at the BPAB meeting, and that is exciting. Um, so I really like the level of engagement because I think that, that the engagement here and throughout the update of this plan is gonna be really important, I hope, to making specific projects go faster. So I'll, I'll come back to that in a second, but I just first wanted to say thank you to everybody for coming. And then, um, minor and specific, and I'll mention it before I forget about it. Chris Eggers, you asked if um, Alta had seen the city thread plan, and I know they have because they mentioned it during their interview, and that was one of the things that made me think, oh, these, they've really been reading and thinking about the challenges of not just updating a plan, but up creating a plan that can actually be implemented. Because one of the things that the city thread report does is identify obstacles. And Alta, I know, is aware of those and already thinking about them some. Um, then some of my specific questions about um, the goals and then the scope of work. So 
Um, like Tanya, I would like there to be something more specific about safety in the goals. Um, I think that we didn't necessarily see that in the, uh, we certainly didn't see it in the old vision. It's just covered by the concept of comfort. Um, but I was looking around last night online trying to find a better example of some specific set of vision and goals that's fairly new. And city of Cambridge, Massachusetts, I believe does reference safety. So that might be one place to look for language on that. Um, and so in referencing vision zero somehow in here will be important. I in particular also been, was thinking about safety for non-voluntary users, just because on my way driving here today, I saw two different people in motorized scooters puttering along through bike lanes on Guerneville Road, hoping that their little orange flag was going to be enough to keep them safe. And um, I chose to drive here because I don't want to be out on Guerneville Road riding my bike. Um, and so but anyway, that's sort of put safety top of mind for me. Um, let's see. So then on the overall goals, I didn't come prepared today to put out specific numeric goals, but I think that those feel really important. And one of the things that I liked about the Cambridge plan that I looked at last night was they had maybe only a sentence or two of vision, but then they had a bunch of really specific goals. By 2020, here, or by 2030, here's how many people are going to be biking, and by 2035, here's how much it's going to go up. And so maybe we're still more to the big picture, and I'm just jumping the gun, but I'm eager to get to those specific goals of what do we aspire to? And I know we talked about this with the general plan and it would be great to have this plan be at least as ambitious as the general plan and to be supporting the VMT reduction goals that the state has laid out and that I know we were advocating for including in the general plan. Okay, then I wanted to talk about the scope. Um, some of these things are big, some of them are small. One of the outreach strategies is to do web surveys. I feel like I have filled out so many web surveys in the last five years, some for the county, some for the city. Is there some central repository of those? Rob, Tarina, somebody, can you pass those on to Alta before we start asking people or is there a way to put them online so we can just upvote? Yep, that problem was a problem five years ago and it's still a problem now. Um, so that's, Otherwise, it feels like we're going back to the public and asking them over and over again to tell them about the problem, but we don't fix it, and it feels a little dispiriting. So if there's a way to tap any of the existing surveys, that would be great. Um, then mentioning this question of getting enough engagement with the active transportation plan update so that it covers some of the required outreach for future grant fundraising, which I think Mauricio referenced, um, but also so that the public engagement process on specific, you know, like we're gonna add two blocks on Ridgeway and the neighbors are outraged because they haven't heard about it till the last minute. But if, can we do sufficient outreach on the actual transportation plan update that to some extent it covers, it checks that box that it gets us one step farther along and doesn't, we don't get held up on projects because there wasn't enough public engagement. So I don't know what that is. And then I was going to suggest and volunteer that I love to weigh in on all these things. I'd love to have Alta come to BPAB every month and give us an update. But in terms of public engagement, if there are better ways to spend the public engagement hours, then maybe we don't need as many updates from BPAB and we can get a written update and submit written comments through staff. Maybe that's a way to ensure that there's more time available for outreach into communities that are less likely to be here today. Because for example, I didn't hear anybody here in the room or online who lives in um, districts one or seven or lives in Southwest Santa Rosa. And I wanna make sure we get lots of involvement from that part of town. Thank you, Elizabeth. Dylan, Emily, you have something to say? Sure, no? <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Um, so yeah, just wanted to thank everybody for coming. Uh, public comment, a lot of the same things were said, which is a really good thing. Um, that this is a big opportunity, this master plan, and that we all want a really bold and ambitious uh, master plan to come from this. So that uh, it's a really good uh, engagement. So I'm hoping that, yes, we do come up with a bold vision. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. 
Uh, I also want to thank everyone for coming. And I think the big uh, words we've heard is safety, especially because of all the accidents lately. So I would just say that safety is one of our top concerns when we're working on this. Thank you, Emily. Um, I think we're pretty much all on the same page, uh, both up here <laughs> on the board and from all the comments we're hearing here. But I do want to say also thank you to all the comments. And uh, I heard some things that um, really resonated with me. Uh, I also actually like the, the current uh, vision and, and uh, goals we have, but I do agree that they're not visionary enough. And we can put a little bit more vision into them, even if it's just uh, you know signaling in the, in the language that we're serious about this. I'd like to see that. Um, I also heard a comment about connecting this to other community goals like health and safety and equity. And I think that that's something that we could probably uh, work into that vision as well. And let me see, do you have uh, any other scribbles I can read here? Um, Oh, climate, of course, that's one of those things as well. We have a climate emergency. Um, and I think that's really ties it up for me. But uh, Mauricio and Torina, uh, are there any um, additional things that we can weigh in on here that will help you or if questions for any of the comments that we've made? Well, Torina asked me to also provide you all with a little bit of a what's going on in the industry and particularly in the Bay Area on goals and objectives, suspicions. Um, as many of you mentioned uh, in the public as well as uh, the BPAB, um, the vision itself can be very general, um, but there should be a focus to it where really the specifics go uh, is where we talk, when we talk about the goals and objectives. And I think that's where a lot of jurisdictions here in the Bay Area have really moved forward to. Um, one thing that uh, we are seeing more and more, uh, particularly uh, in California, um, as we do work in other places, uh, the emphasis on equity um, and the equity, not just for different types of users, but also um, access to in different languages, for example, um, being a little bit more overt on, on, on those goals being uh, focused on equity. And then, uh, as you mentioned, the climate resiliency is extremely important, particularly, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm in Oakland right now and there's still some smoke over here. So it's, it's a little tough to breathe today. Um, I thought we were done with that this year, at least. So uh, climate resiliency is really, really big on that end. So yeah, just wanted to give you those kind of goals. Uh, of course, safety is prime component of everything that uh, uh, we have been doing for the past 25 years. So safety is should, I would recommend that. Uh, of course, I'll leave that to our staff. Uh, but just wanted to provide you with uh, some overall overarching trends that we're seeing. Thank you, Mauricio. Torina, do you have any uh, notes? Um, I don't need anything in terms of um, that will help me move forward. I think your input has been very clear and helpful. I, there were two things said during the board discussion that I want to follow up on. Um, one is a lot of mention of having a vision and goals that have clear um, numerical or quantitative goals behind them. Um, these we call performance measures or performance objectives. And that is something that will be part of the plan. It won't be something that you see in November when I bring you the draft vision and goals. Um, those quantitative objectives are something that we come up with once we have all of the existing conditions together. So at that point, we'll know, here's what our mode share is, how many miles of bike lanes do we have? And then based on that, we can make an informed decision and say, here's what our numerical goal is going to be. Here's the percent that we want to shift our mode, um, our mode share. Here's the number of more miles of bike lane or sidewalk that we want to put in, things like that. The second one is related to outreach. Um, Elizabeth mentioned uh, or asked, can we in this plan do outreach that is specific enough that, you know, when we go for a grant, we can say that we've spoken to a neighborhood about a specific project. Um, 
there, we would need a, a lot of uh, funds and time to be able to do something that specific. What my goal is for this plan is that not only does it help us identify what projects and programs we want to pursue, but it also sets city staff up in a way that we have a really clear framework of how to move forward. And so my hope is that when we work with Alta, we'll have very clear recommendations. So, you know, when we have a project like that, we have a, a like one page guidebook or something like that, that says, here's the order in which you engage with the community. Um, and here's the best way to do that. And the purpose of that would be that, you know, city staff is not sitting around kind of scratching our heads, figuring out the best way to engage with the community. So um, it will take a little bit more time after the, the plan is adopted to then go through outreach for those projects. But there will hopefully be a very clear um, guide on how we'll do that. That's all I've got. And Doug has some comments, his hand raised. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, yeah, I, I want to second or third the, the safety issue. Um, as many of you know, I was hit by a car a couple years ago and left for dead. And uh, of course, I, I will never forget that. And then another thing that came up was a friend of mine who who has been riding uh, probably as much as I do uh, using uh, cycling as transportation mode, which is our goal here, uh, sounds like, which I completely agree with. And I really enjoyed everybody's comments. I, I want to say that. I think that everything was right on the money. Um, but what happened to him was he he got cut off by a city bus. So he calls the city to complain about it. And the reaction he got was, well, that's why I don't ride on the road anymore. And 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 I found that pretty disgusting when our when our goal is to try to get more people on. So what I'm asking is that we make sure that our goals for uh, alternative transportation are known throughout our whole transportation system. So when somebody gets a call saying, hey, such and such bus cut me off when I was in the bike lane, that um, that we we take action and let the driver know, please be aware of cyclists. Um, I it, The main thing we have to do is make the streets safer for cyclists, then we'll get more people riding. I'm, I'm positive of that. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Doc. What the? Hey, Rob, you have muted the room so we can't hear anything. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. I don't know uh, what I hit. Is that better? I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Great. Thank you. Um, so, um, as I mentioned, I'm going to uh, take this in. Tarina, please jump in if you like or if I mess something up on your presentation. So, um, annually, we do come to uh, the bike board and, and present some of the projects that we've completed, some of the projects that are in the queue, and go through where we are um, as far as uh, status and what we're planning for the upcoming year. So that's this is the preview to that. The next meeting in November will actually be where the board can give us feedback and decide if there's reprioritization that they'd like to see as far as the projects that we're working on. Um, but at this point, well, I'm going to go through the presentation and, and let you know where we are and where we've we've come over the last year and what's in progress. Hey, Rob, just a quick question for you and Tarina. I, I wonder if you all need me for anything else. I don't moment. think so, Mauricio. I appreciate your time. Thank you for the invite. Well, thank you. Okay. 
hope this is not forwarding. Hold on a second. Okay, so for the agenda, we're gonna go over some of our completed projects, ones that are currently under construction. Um, look at the studies we've completed over the last year or two um, to remind everyone. Also look at projects that are waiting construction, partition, or partially completed in the planning and design phase, and then some conceptual projects that are on our, on our minds. We're also gonna talk a little bit about um, the grants and our next steps. So looking back at our last year of um, projects that were funded, we had funded um, 1.6 miles of class two, 2.9 miles of class two buffered, um, a small portion of class three, about a mile of class four. And then we've added um, nine different RFPs and one new Hawk into our um, system. And now the nine new RFPs, those are, these are ones that are, um, in progress and funded. So this is what we have money for currently and that are, are in the pipeline. So, and if, and I could go through the different locations and I think with, that might be on a slide coming up here. Something else that the um, Trina and Alexander have been working on is adding this new web page to our website, which is under um, the URL listed here. And it can be found if you type in um, Santa Rosa Bike on Pedestrian Transportation Projects, I believe, um, into our search bar. And it's an interactive map. This one is, in, is just a clip of it, but it's an interactive map that identifies where bike and ped projects are, their status. And um, I, I don't believe that's it. Is there anything else, Alexander, that they include? So, okay, thank you. So it's a, it's a great tool if, if you're interested in what is currently going on or currently on the books to, um, to move forward. So some of the completed projects are ones that are under construction currently. Um, most of you know of the Army Armory uh, drive cycle track that we've recently installed. We also installed uh, class two bike lanes on Range Avenue between Russell and Bicentennial, and then also between um, Guerneville and Edwards to help make the link when we do the bike ped overcrossing. Um, on College Avenue, we've put in a small section of class two buffer bike lanes through a development project um, over here where the old water agency used to be. And then on Santa Rosa Avenue, we're in the middle of construction of new class two buffered bike lanes with the um, Santa Rosa Avenue corridor project. Some of the pedestrian projects that are currently under construction include or have been completed include the Hohen Avenue, um, Sierra Creek, a rapid rectangular flashing beacon, another flashing beacon at Sebastopol and Laurel Grove, the, um, the Hawk that was installed at, uh, on Fulton Road at the high school in the park. And then um, additionally, we're making a lot of different improvements related to crossings and bulb outs on Santa Rosa Avenue as part of that corridor project again. So some of the studies that I think most of you have been involved in and um, that were completed over the last probably year and a half include our, our fourth street to East street to Brighton uh, bike lane project or road diet project, um, our College Avenue from Cal to Morgan um, review, as well as Elliott Avenue, Armory Drive to Mendocino, uh, Montgomery Drive from Alderbrook to Hallman, the Northeast trail connectors or connections and that's the area up in, in the Oakmont area where we have, where we're working to make different connections in that location with the um, upcoming El Noca subdivision. Also uh, Roseland Creek Trail from Stony Point to Burbank and then Stony Point Road from Third Street to Sebastopol. Some of the bike projects that are awaiting construction that we have in the queue include um, bike lanes on Hillsburg Avenue, buffer bike lanes on Hillsburg Avenue, Avenue on B Street, um, buffer bike lanes on Sonoma Avenue that goes from Bobby Lane to E Street, uh, Mendocino Avenue on uh, between 10th and 4th, and then we're adding bike lanes also that are not buffered between um, 10th and College. Um, on 1st Street, we're adding bike lane, buffered bike lanes um, from A Street to Santa Rosa Avenue on 7th Street between uh, B Street and Mendocino Avenue, and then on 4th Street 
um, from E Street to Brighton Lane, as mentioned before. So also adding class two bike lanes on Montgomery Drive and on Healdsburg Avenue near B Street and a small section of class one on First Street. So let's see, I don't know if you guys want me to read these whole slides or not, but I'll, I'll, just, I'll just try to jam through them real quick. We're also adding class four on Santa Rosa Avenue. This is part of the Santa Rosa Avenue. It's actually in conjunction with the Santa Rosa Avenue um, corridor project. We're gonna add a section of class four bike lanes as you exit the Prince Memorial Greenway to get onto um, Santa Rosa Avenue. We'll have a, a protected bike lane there. And then on 4th Street westbound between Hope Street and E Street, we're installing the protected bike lane. If you recall during that study, that section was we're moving the parking out and having a parking protected uh, bike lane there. Then on 6th Street, there's a small section between uh, near the uh, curve where the if you go straight, you go into the mall. We're putting a protected bike lane into that section to help differentiate where the the Curve, the turn should take place for vehicles. And then on Hearn Avenue overcrossing. So these are, this is the list of the um, RFPs that I had mentioned previously. Um, I think we've gone over these before, so I won't read all through them all. Uh, projects partially completed. Um, as mentioned, we have a section of range that we still need to complete between we did between Russell and Bicentennial, and we also completed between Steele and Edwards, that's like Guerneville and Edwards, but we still have an incompleted section between um, Bicentennial and Piner. There's one small segment there that's gonna be really tough to um, install some bike lanes, but we're gonna have to probably get some right away to do that. On Piner Road, there's also a section just to the west of Range that still needs um, bike lanes for the completion of Piner Road from basically Fulton all the way to Cleveland. So we have a lot of projects still in, in planning mode um, that are being designed currently. Um, the Hearn multi-use path is one of them from the uh, overcrossing interchange over to the smart multi-use path um, that we do have a grant for that. And that's um, beginning design soon. Uh, Hopper Avenue, we've had three community meetings at Hopper Avenue to look at the different uh, configurations out there. And we had our last meeting and got a lot of positive impact or feedback, excuse me, from the, from the public on our final design there. Uh, Santa Rosa Creek um, access on the west side of the street. That's a Measure M project where we will be connecting um, Dutton Avenue down to the creek. Um, and we are getting ready to go to uh, out to bid this spring for that project. Um, the Jennings Avenue Smart Crossing is still on our list. Um, everyone, I think, remembers that one. Um, Rosen Creek Trail, that needs, that's a pavement project that needs to be completed. We have the 101 Bike and Pedestrian Overcrossing. That's our number one bike and ped project that is still on our list. And we are looking to um, finalize and finish that funding gap. Um, we we'll actually have a grant next week that we're turning in for... Um, for the ask of the rest of the, the funding for that. Smart trail segments, there are several smart trail segments that are being done by SMART, um, going north from Guerneville all the way out to the city limits and then from south um, that will connect to Bellevue to the south. And that would then complete all of the segments within the city of Santa Rosa minus the sixth street segment. And that one's also under design too, to be doing sixth street in the station. As mentioned earlier, the Southeast Greenway is another project that's um, on the books and is, we don't have the property yet, but it's conceptually, we do have that as a, a project. We also have the Taylor Mountain uh, Park Trail, which would connect as part of our multi-use path system from all the way from Hearn Avenue Interchange over to Taylor Mountain, up through Taylor Mountain, over to the, hopefully over to then the Prince Memorial Greenway to make a really nice loop and multi-use path connection. Uh, we have, let's see, Third Street Pedestrian Improvements. That project is actually escaping my... Oh, I remember, sorry. So that's um, connecting the Jorodota Trail at this, at the... Um, New Cannery site with a, a pedestrian uh, and signal crossing there to get people from the Jorodota Trail that will connect actually along the, um, the rail, a new path will be installed there. 
and we'll make a um, connection over to the uh, over to the station. Um, Sonoma Avenue sidewalk improvements between Hammond and Farmers Lane extension or Farmers Lane Farmers Lane, excuse me. Um, there's currently a lot of gaps there near the, the bus stops there. So we're going to be making sidewalk improvements to make that connection all the way from Hammond to uh, Farmers Lane. And then we also have a project to install bike lanes on Spasso Road between Avalon and Dutton, which is one of the last segments on that street. So we have a lot of conceptual projects that we're looking at um, in the city. And these are ones that I would love feedback on if they're of interest to the to the board or have less interest of the board. Um, so this is the Brookwood Avenue to be done by the development. Oh, this is a, this is sidewalk completion to be done by a developer. Um, Cleveland Avenue corridor improvements. So we have a concept design here to put in a, a road diet on Cleveland Avenue to put in protected bike lanes from industrial down to Guerneville, which would be a nice um, nice long segment in the northwest side of town there on the west side of the freeway. Um, steel lane improvements. So this We're looking to do a pilot test here to look at um, what could happen if we reduce the travel lane here. So we did mention this in the, um, I think we mentioned in, in this group, and actually I would love some feedback on this because this is something that um, I, I want to get clarification on is we do have a project in front of Steel Lane to widen the road, put in a room for the buses to pull out and continue the class two bike lane. This project, what we're proposing to do is actually a pilot project to actually take away a lane of travel in that direction to see if we could actually do that without taking the right away and see if we could slow cars down by taking the lane um, and uh, put in a uh, the bike lane and a loading unloading zone kind of for the, the parents who are, who are currently using that, that area. Um, yeah, in the long run, yes, in the long run, it would be a protected bike lane. But we're looking to do a, a, a pilot project to, to see what the effects of that would be. Um, another pilot project we have is parking reduction study on Sonoma Avenue between Yalupa and Hallman. So that's the section that we currently have that is um, Sharrows. So there's that one segment between you live in Hammond. Um, so we can do a traffic or parking study to see how we can maybe better utilize that area. Um, pedestrian improvements. So sidewalk improvements on Sinead between Mendocino and Lomitas. There's some gaps in there that we're looking to um, connect on the south side of the street. And then the addition of a hawk at Piner Creek, at uh, Piner Creek Trail on Fulton. And I've mentioned that project in the past as well. And me going through all these projects, is this, is this good or is this a waste of time? Or is this, I feel like I'm just yabbering. Keep going. Um, we are a little bit uh, limited on time now. So okay. I would say if there are some specific ones you want to pull out, pull them out and mention them. And otherwise we can. All right, let me, let me scan real quick then. And these. I'll just like start by saying all these projects are listed in the attachments that are in in the um, in your packets. So this is not new information; it's just presented information. So in going through the packet and going and looking at the different uh, attachments and options that are in there, that's what we really want to get from you is what your feedback is on those projects. If you think that they need to be re ranked, if you think that they if some projects need more attention than others. Obviously, our, our, large, our large, largest project and biggest project is the bike pit overcrossing that we're looking to fund. That is, and once we get that done, we, are, we will be able to shift our funding and resources to a lot of these other projects. So that's, that's super exciting for me. Um, so as we do that shift and get to some of these other projects that are smaller in scale, I think all the projects are smaller in scale, um, We'd like to hear guidance from the board on what, on what ones, or, or if it's not even what project, maybe what criteria we should use to help us prioritize the projects in your minds. Should we look at completing gaps should, as, as a high priority, or should we look at locations that we can lower stress or uh, 
crossing improvements. I mean, I, if, if there's a way to help us prioritize where and be on the same page as the board moving forward on those things, that would be super helpful. Um, I will touch a little bit on the grants. And again, that's in your packet as well. Um, we do have, we have been awarded some TFCA grants through SCTA. We've also um, have OBAG three grants, which are funding the Hearn multi-use path and some paving in the downtown area where we're doing restriping as well for Mendocino Avenue. Um, and then there's also um, additional RFB locations that are not additional. There's the TDA location, the money we got from TDA this last year for the RFB, RRFB locations. Um, and we're still looking for grants for the, the BPOC. So real quick recommendations, no action is required tonight, but we would really enjoy if you could go through the attachments, look at the different projects, see which ones are um, seem the most important to you that you want us to help focus our resources on. We do have limited resources and limited money. So um, we want to make the best step forward in, in attacking some of these projects that would make the most difference. So if you have, like I said, criteria, anything like that you want to bring back to the board um, from the bring back next, uh, next meeting, that'd be super helpful for us to help prioritize these. And that's it. Thank you, Rob. I'm sure Trina would have had a much better presentation, sorry. <laughs> okay, so as mentioned, we are getting a little short on time, um, but this item is coming back at the next meeting for uh, another review and uh, decisions. So I want to start by just uh, looking to the board and see if you have any questions about any uh, of the projects that uh, Rob mentioned here. No, okay. Oh, Rob, can we just email you comments on specific projects? Absolutely. Okay. Dylan, would you put the mic over there again? <laughs> okay, so with no more questions from the board for now, we'll go to public comment. So if you're in the room, you know the drill over here. And if you're on Zoom, you can raise your hand or dial star nine from a phone. So Eris, what do you got? I am underwhelmed. Um, first of all, this is referred to as a work plan, but it looks like just a list of projects. And to me, the, the word plan uh, connotes timelines and priorities. So I'm not sure if this is all what's supposed to be done this year or if this is being presented as a list and the board's being asked to say which ones should get on this timeline. So, so that's a little confusing. Um, I also noticed that some of the, the numbers on, in the packet of miles of different things and what you showed on the slides don't match. So I'm not sure how much of what really is happening because what you showed us on the slides and what here when I was adding things up here, they didn't match. So, so that's kind of um, problematic to me. Um, so... There were you on the slide, you said something like 5.6 miles of bike facilities. And I, I didn't get a chance to add those all up on here, but um, only one half mile listed in the packet is, is class four. As we've all been saying, class two, class three, don't change behavior. They don't change behavior. They don't make the road safer. Um, if, if I were the queen and could wave my wand, we would not be building anything except class four. Um, and then again, on the ones awaiting construction, there's uh, uh, like less than half a mile. My other, other thing that always frustrates me with these lists of projects is they're all so teeny, like the one on Sebastopol Road, which I don't know if you've ridden Sebastopol Road, but I ride it frequently and it's a mess. Um, one of the things listed on there was like one block, you know, and, and another one is just a really short piece. I, Sebastopol Road needs a decent bike, uh, bikeway all the way from Dutton going west, you know, through the heart of Roseland, not a little piece by, you know, in one piece here and one piece there, the whole damn road needs to be redone. Uh, and Guerneville Road, you know, just a little piece between range and the smart station. One of my staff members went to school at Steel Lane School and talks about how terrified she was every day having to walk 
from on the other side of Mendocino over to school. And it's still terrifying. All of Guerneville Road from Mendocino to the, to the train station needs to be protected. Even if I'm going somewhere that's near that train station, I don't, and I'm taking the train, I don't get off there because walking and riding around it is suicidal. I get off downtown to come up Mendocino, which seems stupid, but, um, you know, forget all these class three throwing sheroes down here and there. And then what about Stony Point? Nothing about Stony Point. We've studied it. It's been five years. People have died. It's high injury network. Stony Point needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. And it's not even in here except, you know, oh, as a study that's waiting. So uh, priorities just are so wrong. Thanks. Thanks, Harris. Alexa? Hi, um, I just wanted to make a quick comment because I've been riding a lot, even more than I used to ride because I got a new electric bike and it's changed my life and I never drive anymore. Um, but I just wanted to put it out there that on any projects that are in the pipeline for the coming year, if we could really focus on daylighting the corners, it has happened to me multiple times in the last month that I've come to a corner and I can't see the traffic coming and I have to pull almost out into the traffic lane to see around a truck or a delivery van that's parked on the corner. And it's a low cost at only the cost of some few angry neighbors who have lost a parking spot. Um, and I'd also like the daylighting to take into consideration the speeds on the road because you need to see further if the cars are going faster. So um, I just wondered if that could be looped into the projects that are in the pipeline. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, there you are. Hi, Jenny Bard again. And um, I, I'm happy this uh, item came up actually because I wanted to talk a little bit about um, things that the city could be doing now, which didn't really pertain to the development of the active transportation plan. And, and um, as City Thread Report has noted, uh, focus on identifying 25 new miles of mobility projects and, and a three year strategy, not a 20 year. So I guess I'm looking to see in terms of prioritization, if there can be a, some kind of pilot project um, done to maybe do five miles, which is way more than we have right now, but could that be moved up the, uh, the list uh, to be a pilot for our city to really understand what it's like to ride long miles in a protected bike lane to get north, south, east, west? So that was my thought. And I just want to thank the staff for all the grants you're writing. I know we live and die by grants. I work for a nonprofit organization and I commend you for all the grants you're putting out there. I know it's hard when you don't get them, but thank you and uh, keep up the great work on that. So um, that's just what I, I wanted to suggest if that could be a, uh, a, if a pilot project could be put into the mix, maybe looking at some, all the, all, some of what's already there and just knitting it together to make a mini network. And with unprecedented, I know you know this, but um, seizing the moment, climate change, helping people to connect the dots on that and um, having fun at the same time. And with, so you know, 2024 is the election, we have unprecedented funding right now available to us through the federal government and, and state grants and such. And you all know that you're going for it. So um, the more we can push for that now, I think the better. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do we have any comments from Zoom? Yes, Monona, I'm giving you permission to speak. Hi. Um... I just wanted to comment that I think it's really an impressive number of projects that are under construction right now and um, underway to be constructed soon. So I think that there's a lot of um, great changes underway to Santa Rosa and I'm optimistic about it becoming a more bikeable um, city. And um, specifically about the upcoming projects, if the 101 is a really big 
project. I know a lot of resources are being put into that. I would encourage uh, city um, staff to look at a connected east-west route that um, so includes looking at the Jenning overcrossing. I know that there's been some controversy about that, but looking at how from the 101 folks can get west for several miles and how folks will go east for a significant route. And really um, thinking about doing um, projects that are connected to each other, because it's really a lot of work that is underway. But um, as Eris was saying, it feels not significant if you see just one block done, especially when you're bicycling, you know, one block goes pretty quickly. So um, having um, more projects that are lined up to connect with each other and then highlighting that work. And I think that uh, I write a lot on the smaller, um, we call kind of collector streets. If it's, if cars are not going very fast, um, it feels safe to ride with kids as long as cars are going, you know, less 20 miles per hour or less. And so connecting some of those streets, making improvements to the intersections and then um, showing it as a connected route uh, would be really beneficial. And I would encourage if the 101 is really going to move forward, run a one overcrossing is going to move forward, um, building on that to do the connection with Elliot. I've been over at Cottingtown, a lot of students from the JC go over to Cottingtown and I'm sure most of them drive. So making sure that the, the rest of the, the network approaching and leaving the 101 um, has a, a clear and safe route that is also communicated to people. So that's it. And thank you for all the um, great work and projects you're doing. Thank you, Minona. Are there any other comments? No, that concludes the comments online. Thank you. So we'll bring it back to the board and uh, see if you have any insights you can share with Rob um, on any of the projects or priorities for the upcoming projects. I have a handful of thoughts that there's no clear answer here, but when I first looked at this list of projects, I was feeling, well, and I still am feeling overwhelmed by having no real way to evaluate them. And I was wishing that there was a map either overlaid on the high injury network. So I could go, that one's a priority because that's a particularly problematic area or on a map that somehow indicates gaps or opportunities that are currently missed. So building off of the city thread recommendations to create a network of low stress connected routes through town. Um, how could, so city thread isn't saying that we necessarily need to add 25 miles of protected bike lane. We could tap existing low stress streets like some of the ones that Monona referenced riding on with her kids if we can identify the crossings or the gaps. And so getting best bang for the buck might be finding that really gnarly intersection and dealing with it. And then you can tap and activate the mile of low stress streets on either side. But with the list presented this way, it's very hard to see where those opportunities lie. I can't imagine that making such a, net, a map is simple, but that is what would help me give better feedback about what to prioritize. Um, and then my last thought was, are there any projects here that would help bolster the case for the overcrossing? I don't, I was just imagining if you put in a grant proposal and you said, we've got this gorgeous three miles in one direction and two miles in the other direction, and all we need is a bridge in the middle, does that make the case for the overcrossing better? And it's just a thought. Thank you, Elizabeth. Any other comments from the board? Dylan, will you go at that again? <laughs> go ahead, Sonia. Thank you. I would like to second Elizabeth's comment about the map because I was thinking the very same thing. It's like if I could just see, even having a, a paper map here in the room that we could look at and you know draw on or scribble on, I think would be really helpful to put these projects in a better context. Um, I really liked Monona's comment about in, in terms of our prioritization, looking at some of our existing high priority projects like the Highway 101 overcrossing 
and what should our priority projects be to make sure that you can get to and from that overcrossing in a safe and comfortable and easy way. And so I'm, I'm intrigued by that idea and I'd like to give some more thought to that between now and the next meeting. Um, and then I guess one other thought in terms of prioritization, which is similar, is thinking about our different corridors like the Stony Point Road. Um, you know, we, we did the study there, we know what needs to be done. So looking at Stony Point in, as a whole kind of road and what other kinds of projects should we be considering along there. Um, College Avenue is one that, you know, certainly we know could use a lot of help. So kind of thinking in terms of our major corridors could be another way to help us prioritize. So. Thank you, Tanya. Any other comments from the board? No, but well, I just want to echo what Tanya's echo of <laughs> Elizabeth. And I think that, uh, Rob, from what I was hearing here is that the connectability and the network building is one of the big priorities that uh, that we have here. And also, you know, Elizabeth's comments about creating uh, support for the big projects that we want, both the 101 overpass, but also Stony Point, where we uh, we didn't get the grant we'd hoped for. But if we can do some things around it that support that, I think it's a great idea to do that too. Thank you. Anything else, Rob or Torino? Nope. Nope, I'm good. Thank you. Then we'll finish item 6.2 and move on to item 7. Uh, chair and board member announcements. Do we have any announcements from the board? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to item number 8, staff announcements. Do you want to do those, Trina, or do we like me to? Um, I have, I can do two of them. And then Alexander, I know, has one. Um, one is I wanted to reiterate what Rob had said about there being a, a project list webpage. This was in response to um, Bikeable Santa Rosa requesting that there was an easier way to see where um, uh, current and future projects are happening. Um, so anyway, that project webpage is a, um, just coalescing a lot of that information. And then it also on the bottom of the web page includes a table that um, uh, lists in a little bit more detail the types of projects that are going on. So there's a second spot that you can see that information. My second item is that um, unfortunately we've heard from Bird and they are um, discontinuing their service of their shared scooters in Santa Rosa. Um, about three, three and a half weeks ago, I had reached out to Bird saying that um, it was clear on our internal city dashboard that uh, a lot of the scooters were non-operational um, and had been for several uh, weeks. And they let us know that the fleet manager was unable to complete the job. So they started interviewing to replace that, um, that person and were not able to find anyone so they've discontinued their service as of, I, I believe it was a week ago, although the scooters have not been here for um, several weeks. So uh, we are looking at edits to our, um, our scooter share uh, program language so that we can open it back up and we can go out and hopefully find another vendor. That's it for me. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to put in a plug for our bicycle friendly communities uh, application that we submitted. We have uh, through our city connections, which is live now, um, a survey that you could take so that you could add to hopefully getting us to gold. Um, so yeah, just put in a plug for that. They have it in English and in Spanish. Uh, the, the spot to connect to the, the Spanish uh, language is a little tiny little spot in the, the far left corner. So you got to really look for it, but it's there. Um, but yeah, so if you could all do that, that'd be great. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Then we now have 609 and we are adjourned. Thank you all.